Chris, good to see you again. Last year we spoke about your challenge being just simply to come back from that 2019 injury and prove yourself in 2020. What will be the measure for you this year in 2021? My, my number one goal remains getting back to 200% level again. I think that uh, obviously everything depends on that. Um, last year I, I thought I'd come a lot uh, closer to to where I needed to be then than I actually was, but it was only really once I got back into racing again that I I felt uh, exactly where I was and, and realized the weaknesses I still had and what I still needed to work on. So um, hopefully that's that's been a, a great learning experience for me and something that um, especially has, has driven the decision for me to be out here in California, especially this year uh, during the winter and. Um, work on things to get myself uh, hopefully back to that top level again. And just how far off do you think you are given your power numbers at this point, what you're seeing <coughs> on your computer? So uh, pretty much uh, straight off to the Vuelta España last year, I had a little bit more hardware uh, taken out of my leg. I had a couple screws removed um, from just above my kneecap. Um, they, they were causing a bit of an irritation in my quad that I could feel while I was racing in, in the Vuelta. Um, so it's, it's good to have those out now. Um, and since then I've been working pretty hard, uh, mainly on the quadriceps, uh, in terms of the cycling specific muscles, the quadriceps are the, are the, the biggest ones for me that were, were damaged, um, as well as a lot of the, the stabilizing muscles, um, on the, on the side of the legs so around the, uh, I guess the, the piriform, the glute med as well on the, on the side of the leg. So I've, I've been focusing on, on those two areas in, specific, uh, in particular um, and, and feel as if I'm, I'm certainly um, making a lot of, a lot of headway, um, a lot closer to where I need to be. Now, Chris, obviously you're not here with the team at the camp here in Spain. Can you talk a little bit about why you decided to be in California and train there at the Red Bull Training Center in Santa Monica? One of the obviously biggest biggest keys to that has been getting my rehab back on track. I, I think it, it wasn't quite completed last year as, as I had hoped, but I've, I've had the chance being over here in California to work really closely with the Red Bull High Performance Center. Um, they've been fantastic in supporting me and I've been in there doing sessions of three, four times a week, um, quite, quite heavy, quite lengthy sessions there. And I feel as if I'm, I'm certainly much closer to, to where I need to be starting the season this time around than I was last year. Can you talk about your concerns uh, when you were in negotiations before you joined the team? Uh, and then also, what do you think that you're getting out of the team? What's your motivation to join a new team after so many years with Ineos and Sky? Certainly, I mean, that, that was uh, one, of the, one of the big factors for me, I think, joining Israel Startup Nation was um, to help be part of that movement, especially a movement very similar to what we'd seen um, with with Sky over in Britain, um, helping to get so many people involved in cycling and on bikes. And I think the, the this project with Israel Startup Nation is in, in a very similar sort of phase. If we re rewind a few years to to the Sky days, um, to to help sort of stimulate cycling in Israel and get a lot a lot more youngsters interested in it, get the public interested in it. And um, certainly, I mean, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great initiative and something that I, I look forward to being a part of. And naturally, that there are some extremely strong teams in the peloton that have, uh, I, I guess, dominated the front of the peloton as we've seen over the last, uh, last season. Um, Pogaccia, uh, look, just looking at the Tour de France last year, um, his team wasn't riding like that. And he ended up winning the Tour de France. Um, which I mean, fantastic race by him, um, but it, it does it does show and it does give a lot of hope to the smaller teams seeing um, a scenario like that coming off. And at the end of the day, it comes down to the, the strength of the leaders, and um, that's that's where the race happens. Is it a challenge for you to show that you can win even without Team Sky, Team Ineos? Is that the big challenge for you this coming twenty twenty one season and beyond? And especially, I think one one really big motivation for me was knowing that I'm sitting on on four Tour de France titles, um, and I don't feel as if I'm done yet. Um, I, I'd like to get to 
to, to, to number five. Um, I'd like to keep racing Grand Tours, targeting them in, until, uh, until I'm ready to, 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 to retire from the sport on my own terms. And I think, um, yeah, just the prospect of um, being basically being put out by a crash, uh, that, that didn't sit well with me. So as soon as I obviously found out that I was, I was able to make a full recovery and there was not, nothing physically that should hold me back, then uh, that was, that was a, a simple decision for me to make. Age is a state of mind. Um, yeah, um, I feel relatively young in cycling years. I only got into the sport a little bit later. And um, I certainly, I think um, the way nutrition has evolved, the way sport has evolved over the years, I, I think it's certainly possible for athletes to go later and later. Um, and I mean, using, just, just looking at a rider like, Valverde in his 40s already, still still racing Grand Tours, still up there, um, competing with the best in the world. So I mean, it's it's certainly possible, um, and uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to prove that as well. Finally, Chris, what does your race schedule look like starting off this year, 2021, and and also your first race here back in Europe? Um, I think, especially with all the sort of uncertainty at the moment about what races are actually going ahead and um, the restriction of movement in, in some places, um, that's, that's a little bit up in the air at the moment and I'm, I'm just waiting to, waiting to actually bed something down properly. Um, we, have, we have a general idea, but I, I'd rather not share that until it's, uh, until it's cemented um, and we know exactly what. What, what the season's going to look like. But it's, it's definitely going to be a racing program that's, that's built towards building up to the Tour de France as, as the main objective of the season.